A dripping faucet is a major annoyance, not just because you're paying for every drop of water that comes out of your faucet, but because it's not very pleasant to listen to when you're trying to watch TV or relax and all you can hear is that faint dripping sound in the background. So that's why we want to get this fixed. This is a Delta faucet, it is a single lever style faucet as you can see, and that means that there's going to be a series of O-rings and seals in this assembly right here that's going to be responsible for holding back that water flow. Now with any type of plumbing, the first thing you're going to do is turn the water off to the fixture. So for that, we're going to have to go under the sink and turn off the water valves. So you're going to have two different valves. You're going to have one for the cold water and one for the hot water. So they're just regular screw type valves and you're going to turn them in clockwise. It's just a regular thread, so lefty loosey righty tighty. So you're going to turn it to the right to try and shut off that water flow. And same thing on the side for the hot water, which mine has a red tubing on it. Turn it to the right. And then we're going to go back up to the sink and turn the faucet on to make sure that nothing is dripping out. So now that those valves are tight, turning the faucet on, no water coming out. So now we're safe to disassemble the lever assembly. So for this specific lever, you're going to be looking for a little rubber grommet that says uh, hot and cold or blue and red here. So this is something easy that you can just kind of peel out with your fingernail. So underneath is a set screw, and this is an 8 inch Allen wrench. Alright. So we're going to remove that set screw until you can lift the handle and the lever straight off. So looking at the assembly that's left, you can see a seam right here, a horizontal seam right underneath the dome. So this top part on the dome can actually unscrew, so you can just grab it, unscrew it, and you can see that's just threaded, it just screws onto the base assembly and that just holds this uh, valve in place. So we can set this aside. So you have the stem that's coming out here and you can see there's a little plastic disc and that plastic disc has an o-ring. So I just remove that o-ring and I can see that there's a little bit of water that's pouring out of here. So that means I need to double check my valves and make sure they're tightened down all the way. So when you grab the stem and you pull it out you'll see that it's on a ball valve on the end. All right. So basically this ball valve is a hollow sphere and it's got several different holes that line up with different ports underneath. So those different ports are going to uh, line up with your cold water line and your hot water line. And depending on which way that you have your faucet and your lever oriented, it's going to let a certain portion of hot water and cold water to get the right mix. So after you remove that ball valve, if you look in the top, you can see that there's still some water sitting in the cavity and there's a couple O-rings that we'll want to replace to help improve that ceiling. The best way to drain the water out of there is to just grab the ornamental collar at the bottom and once that o-ring seal at the bottom breaks, the water will just drain out. So go ahead and remove this ornamental collar, it's just for decoration to cover up the plumbing. And you can see there's a couple of o-rings on there that we'll go ahead and replace while we're in the faucet. Now that the water's drained out and you have the ornamental collar out of the way, just take a very thin allen wrench or a pick and we're just going to try and lift up on this o-ring. We're just going to pry that o-ring out of there gently and it comes with a spring. So now that you have that o-ring out of there, look at it and you'll probably see quite a bit of wear. So mine looks like it's worn out pretty good. It looks like it has a bit of a cupped shape to the ceiling surface because it's been riding on that spherical ball valve. And every time you move that lever forward and back and side to side, you're rubbing on this specific ceiling surface. And so this is what's going to wear out and cause your faucet to drip. So like most of my YouTube videos, I don't decide to make a video until after I've done some of the work. But this is the parts kit that I got at the local Lowe's Home Improvement here. This is Delta Genuine Parts, part number RP3614A. And so this has a bunch of miscellaneous parts and this fit my sink perfectly. So now that you got that O-ring and spring type seal removed, you want to go to your kit and get the replacements. So you got a new rubber seal and a new spring. So the spring does have a taper to it, so there is a larger diameter end and a smaller diameter end. The larger diameter is going to go into the faucet, so you want to put the small end into the seal. And so I drop the spring in there first, and then it's easier to put the seal in next, and you just kind of drop it in and try and push it on top of the seal, and then it lines up with the hole, and it's good to go. So you're just going to repeat for the other side. So the Delta kit that I had also came with two O-rings, and these are larger, and they go on the outside of this pipe, which seals to the inner diameter of the decorative collar. So I'm going to put the seals aside, and I'm just going to grab a small Allen wrench or a pick, 
I'm just going to start working these O-rings off. Pop out of the groove. One O-ring out. Alright. Got part of it out of the groove. I'm just going to work my finger around to pop it out of the slot. And there it goes. And that O-ring is out. So with the new O-rings, you just want to be gentle with them because when they're dry, they can get easily pinched, they can get cut, and you don't want them to not seal effectively. So you just want to be very delicate as you put them on. And just kind of roll them down. And that O-ring is in place. So we're just going to repeat with the second O-ring. Try not to cut it or get it nicked on the threads as you're sliding it down. Just gotta get over the collar there, and once it gets into the notch, you just run your finger along, and it pops into place. Both of those O-rings are replaced, so now this decorative collar can slide into place, and that will be sealed properly. Press it all the way down, and now you've got new O-rings there. So with those two O-rings and the decorative collar in place, and you've got the two spring-loaded uh, O-rings in place on the hot water and cold water ports, we want to rebuild the ball valve. And so the Delta kit that I had came with two different plastic gray discs. Uh, one has more of a triangular cutout, one has a rectangular cutout. My faucet used the triangular cutout, so I'm not going to use this one, but your faucet may, so I'm just going to toss this one aside. And if you look at this gray plastic disc, there is a rubber seal on the inside of it, and that mates with the top half of that ball valve like that. There's an O-ring on the outside which seals to the inside of the pipe there. And then the stem of that ball valve is going to just stick straight up within that triangular hole. And if you look closely, you also will see an alignment tab. So there's a protrusion that sticks out on the side. And that's going to match up with a notch on the side of your sink pipe. So all you really need to do, you just need to go ahead and stick your ball valve right into the pipe, line up that alignment tab and press it down and that's how it needs to go. Now if you look at the end of the stem there is a flat section and that's the part that's going to line up with the set screw that you had to remove initially. So that's how you know which way that ball valve needs to sit within the faucet. So now that you got all the seals in place you want to take the dome and you just want to press everything down and you're going to be able to screw the top of that decorative piece down. So all you need to do is take your lever and line up that hole with the end of the stem and you want to get that flat section of the stem roughly aligned with that set screw. Once you start to tighten it down it'll kind of self-align. I'm just going to tighten the set screw not too tight but enough that you're not going to remove your handle by accident. So once the set screw is in place you just want to take your hot and cold indicator this little rubber grommet and you want to press it into the hole covering that set screw. And it does kind of have a tapered surface to it so you just want to make sure that you have it lined up correctly and it should press in fairly easily. So now that both water valves are on underneath the sink you can see that that sink is not dripping when the faucet is turned off. Now you have a lot of water that spilled out of the faucet area so you're gonna have some air bubbles in the top so you want to just turn your faucet on and let the flow even out. Go from the cold side, hot side, So I want to wrap up this video with some lessons learned because this is actually the third time that I've tried to fix this leaky faucet. So the first time I got some aftermarket replacement parts from Home Depot, they were not Delta brand. Uh, they were still designed to fit a Delta faucet but they didn't fit properly. It just had a very bad feel in the lever. When you start turning the water on it was so tight that it felt like you were going to break something and it didn't even fix the leak. So I did switch to Delta official replacement parts. And you know what? I was just in a hurry. I was not thinking it through and I jumped to conclusions and all I replaced was this plastic disc. I didn't replace the spring loaded seals on the bottom of the faucet. I didn't think to keep looking. I, you know, this was the first thing that I saw when I opened up the faucet and I said, well, sweet, there it is. I'm done. And you know what? You're going to get the kit. It's going to come with all the parts. So go ahead and do a thorough job. And so just by replacing this plastic disc, I did fix the leak and it lasted for about a year. And now I'm having to do it again because I didn't do a complete job the first time. Yeah, so that's it. So I hope this video helped a couple people. You know, I've had to do this three times now because of my own, uh, you know, laziness or stupidity of not fixing it right the first time. And, you know, it's, 
it's something that you just got to get annoyed by it enough to actually be proactive and go out and try and actually get it fixed. So, you know, actually with my faucet leaking the way that it was, you know, it was really annoying, but it actually never showed up on our water bill. It did not drip a measurable amount of water to make my water bill go up monthly to monthly. So it was very easy to just kind of ignore it and put it off and I've put it off long enough. So go ahead and get it fixed. The, the kit is 10 bucks. Very easy. Get rid of that drip.